Genshin Impact 2.2 has certainly been a very mysterious adventure. In the first half of the 2.2 update, we were able to take a boat over to the island of Surumi, the final island on Inazuma. On that island is a bizarre phenomenon going on, and everything is surrounded in fog. This is honestly my favorite place that we have been in Genshin so far. The soundtrack, the eeriness, and the mystery all entice me to keep going. The world quest, titled The Sea of Fog and the Ride of Trees, has opened my eyes to so much lore that my brain is practically exploding. With that, I was going to make a video about Tartaglia, considering it's his second rerun. But all of this intrigued me so much, I had to make content in regards to this. So today, let's head over to Surumi, and uh, be sure to not get lost, or else you will wind up back at the beginning. Trust me, that happened to me a couple of times, and it wasn't fun. Am I sensing some kind of Zelda reference here? Also, there will be spoilers for Surumi Island and the world quest as of day 3, so if you don't want spoilers, then don't watch this video. Anywho, before we begin though, if you enjoy Teyvat's facts and wisdom, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. After the video is over, join us over in our community discord server, where we talk all about Genshin including lore. Okay, with that said, let's open the Teyvatchinary and see what's been uncovered. Let's start off with what Surumi Island is and the plot that is involved with it. Surumi Island is an island in the southernmost point of Inazuma, and on there lived the tribe of ancient people that worshipped a the Thunderbird. For these ancient individuals, this Thunderbird was their deity. They believed that the fog that was placed there on their island was protection given to them by the Thunderbird. This ancient tribe thought they had the ultimate protection. To satisfy this deity, this tribe went through the extremes of sacrificing its own people. However, their sacrifices were in vain, as the Thunderbird did didn't really seem too interested. No people really sparked its interest until one day she, this thunderbird named Kapitzer, met a young boy named Ru, who sung for her. The thunderbird after a while would love to hear Ru sing to her, and thus started to become attached to him. The priests of Surumi apparently saw this as an opportunity, and saw that because the thunderbird took interest in Ru, they perceived this as, let's sacrifice Ru. After Ru is sacrificed to the bird, the Thunderbird is enraged by this, and thus destroys the entirety of the tribe. Many years later, this Thunderbird is sealed away at Mount Amakumo by the likes of Raiden A, and now traces of it may exist there. The description of the Thundering Manifestation states, an unusual electro life form that weaves thunder and lightning as a song unto the resentment that drives its every move. They say that this is an elemental being driven by pure regret. To further back this up, if we take a look at the Thundering Fury Artifacts set, it depicts a crisis involving a Thunderbird. And I am 99.9% .9 sure this is the Thunderbird they are referring to and the boy that is also mentioned in there. The singing that the boy sung for the Thunderbird really resonated with it. In due time though, it met its end after being slain as a monster. Moving past the plot, what's really peculiar about all of this is how time seems different here and how Sumita, the commissioner of the world quest, talks about a heavy disturbance within the ley lines. It makes sense for there to be a disturbance in the ley lines due to how the ley lines are always referred to as recording all the history that happens in Teyvat. The ley lines seem to be repeating the same exact events over and over again. Not to mention how the Thundering Fury set practically talks about the same events that occur. The artifacts are the records of the world, and thus are also keys to unlocking the true knowledge of this world. The perches that we see seem to be ermine soul trees, and by offering the feathers of the Thunderbird to the ermine soul tree, this is what starts the sacrificial ceremonies. I don't know if I'm going nuts, but I feel this also kind of connects to the dragon spine lore when it came to the dragon spine civilization giving them elemental circlets to communicate with the divine. Back to Surumi though, all of the inhabitants that we see are merely illusions, but when we talk to Ru, he's a lot different. He is able to interact with others from the outside world, including the Traveler and Paimon. And with that, we hear him also talk about what others have said about the outside world as well. From what it seems like, Ru could be alive, but we don't really know if he is or not. But from what I can speculate on, perhaps the ley lines are so messed up that he manifested into a physical being, and now it's the Traveler's job to make sure he doesn't get sacrificed. That's why we are there, trying to prevent the ceremony from happening again. 
Maybe Traveler is supposed to save him from his fate, and that's why we are on the island to begin with. Or there's also an alternative where we simply just see the events that transpired and we get a taste of what the ancient world is like, as a way of us learning the ways of this world. This Thunderbird Calamity being one of the calamities of the world, and we the Traveler get to learn about it. I really wish there was a concrete answer as of now, but there isn't just due to the fact that the quest isn't complete yet. However, I think I can offer some answers with pieces of mythology about the Thunderbird from certain Native American tribes and the ancient Japanese people known as the Ainu. When it comes to the Thunderbird in Native American culture, the Thunderbird is seen as a very powerful deity of protection, strength, and power. The tribe of Sodumi also believed to have the full protection of the Thunderbird and definitely worshipped it as a powerful being. In Native American mythology, it is also believed by the Thunderbird's work that vegetation grew and there were plentiful harvests due to the storms it would create. One really interesting aspect of the Thunderbird is with the Ojibwe tribe, in which they see the Thunderbird as being created for the purpose of fighting underwater spirits, but also punished humans who broke moral rules. This could be inspiration for how the Thunderbird destroyed the ancient tribe of Surumi for sacrificing humans, especially a child who the Thunderbird bird took interest in. The other side of the mythological references we have come from the ancient Japanese people known as the Ainu. The Ainu worshipped a variety of gods and often sung songs as a way of worship. There were bards within the Ainu who sung songs about various gods. In a published piece written by Yuki Echidi, who was well versed in Ainu oral tradition, grew up listening to recitations of ancient Ainu gods. In her piece, it contains songs of 13 different gods, such as the fox, rabbit, wolf, frog, and most notably, an owl. The owl is the one that really got me thinking. The song itself is titled, The Yukar the Owl Himself Sang. Yukar, meaning Ainu sagas that form a long, rich tradition of oral literature. Usually, men and women would perform these, but as the Ainu culture declined, women more so took over this role. In this song, though, it depicts a young boy and his family who are known as paupers, or individuals who are known to be in poverty. The Owl God would send them tears of silver and gold. Thus, people would always try to shoot it down in an attempt to strike it rich. The rich didn't believe in the possibility of a pauper shooting the owl god down. However, there was a boy who attempted to do so, but the rich pretty much just laughed at him and beat him up. The young impoverished boy though, with a little rotten bow and arrow, was able to bring this bird down. The owl god actually felt pity for the boy though, and as the bird fell down from the sky, this little individual carried the bird back to his home, protecting the bird with his life. As the boy entered his home, the bird was greeted by the boy's family who were also impoverished. The boy and his family were pure souls who weren't filled with greed. The owl god really appreciated their purity and thus gave them treasures, making the impoverished family wealthy. The family would then befriend the villagers and discuss what the owl god had done for them. The villagers apologized for the mistreatment and shortly after, they celebrated. The owl god was deeply amused by their celebration in which it felt relieved. The village was now peaceful and everyone grew up to have prosperous lives. In this song, I think the boy that is referenced could be a reference to Lu in how he befriended the Thunderbird. Now, some of you must be shaking your head, saying, Aw, oh, come on, Tave. The Thunderbird looks nothing like an owl. How much Nakuweed have you smoked? Oh, actually, not enough. Because what I'm about to tell you, even with all the Nakuweed, is pretty mind-boggling to say the least. In the Weapon Ascension material, known as Narukami's Affection, it states this. No matter whether it was the demon owls who recited amidst the fog and ripped through the skies, the baked Danuki who dared to trust her imperial gardens, or that female Oni, lovely as the moon and mighty in battle, yet who would eventually come to blows with her, whether it was the Tengu who soared on dark wings, or the Kitsune Saigu who once walked by her side, but who eventually disappeared forever. Demon owls who resided amidst the fog and ripped through the skies. The only entity that I can connect this to is the Thunderbird. And I don't know about you, but the Thunderbird statues look very owl-like. That could just be me though. But someone on Reddit pointed it out and I saw it. Upon further digging around, I found out about the Sikap Komoi, which in Ainu means Owl God. Also, if I butchered this name, I do apologize. I couldn't really find a way to pronounce it, so if you guys could actually let me know how to properly pronounce it in the comment section, that'd be great. The Sikap Komoi 
was seen as a god of plenty. According to the mythology behind it, famine had struck the land, and the owl god wanted to help these people. The Sakap Kamui wanted to send a message to heaven in regards to the famine. In doing so, it asked a few messengers to deliver its message. There were three messengers that were given the task. The crow, the mountain jay, and the dipper bird. Crow and mountain jay were deemed inadequate for the task and thus were killed off for their negligence. The dipper bird, however, was able to complete this task though, and finally sent out the message to heaven. Once the message had been received, the news was the Kamui of fish and game were enraged due to the fact that humans weren't showing the proper respect for the gifts they were giving. Sakap Kamui taught them the proper rituals after killing a fish or deer. Once the humans performed these rituals, the Kamoi were satisfied, therefore ending the famine. Let's take a look now at the name Kapitsur. Also, if I butchered that, I also apologize. Let me know down below. I found this very interesting post on Reddit by Karasu Burb, in which they talk about Kapitsur Kamoi, which translates to Stellar Sea Eagle. In this piece, its theorized Kapitsur Kamui were highly valued because their feathers were used for the best arrow fletching at the time. If we connect this back to the Yukar the Owl himself sang, these arrows fletched could be a reference to that further putting together pieces. There's also the feathers and Genshin we see of the Thunderbird, so all in all, the pieces fit decently together. One last final piece of speculation before I end this video is that I really think that this island could be part of the Dark Sea. And I mean, it does kind of make sense, especially with the fog being outside of the eyes of Celestia and the fact the Thunderbird destroyed this ancient tribe. We've seen similar cases happen with Osile and Orobashi. Osile pretty much flooded his people, and we all know what happened with Orobashi. It seems to me that all these beings have been killed off in regards to some kind of calamity, and are named after demons from the Ars Goetia. I'm not sure what this thunder god's name is, or if Kapitsur is even a god. But this is my take for now, until we receive more information from this world quest. And if you guys have any idea on if this is even based on the Ars Goetia demon, let me know down below. Well, that wraps up my take on the mystery that is Surumi Island. What did you guys think? This place is pretty mysterious, huh? Let me know your thoughts down below, and also tell me your speculation on how this plot is going to end. Also, huge shoutouts to Reddit for helping me in the research of this video. The people on Reddit are geniuses when it comes to this lore, and I wanted to tell them I appreciate the work you guys do for the lore in this game. I will leave the link to the Reddit post down below, so thank you Reddit and all the researchers there. Anywho though, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thanks for opening the Teyvatchinary, and with that said, I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.